Hi everyone, my name is Richard Anderson. I am the Director of Information Services at Washington International School. I'm also the owner of the Google Plus community around curriculum mapping with G Suite. Today I'm going to take you through a walkthrough of our latest iteration uh, going into 2017. So here goes. The foundation for all of this is uh, Google Drive and um, I've built this out in a new Google site. Uh, the landing page um, consists of three pieces. It's a link to the course overviews, um, the form to request a, a unit template, and then um, the form to attribute outcomes to specific units. So looking at the course uh, overviews, um, this is an awesome table that is currently um, a listing of Google Drive documents that is filterable by grade level and um, editors as we add more. Carol, who's a member of this community, is our Director of Teaching and Learning. Currently she is the only one who has editing access to these documents, but what I really like about this is that all of these documents are just a click away and you can dive into full editing mode of these documents um, when exploring the course overviews. So the unit planners are located under Trigarin units and again this is a little bit more sophisticated awesome table uh, with some more data. So again we can filter by in this case teachers who are the editors of documents. Um, I can just pick any teacher from here and go to the different units. I can also look at the time it was last updated. So this is a nice slider mechanism and I know that a lot of work has been done recently and a lot of this will be Carol because uh, she's here essentially reading all of the curriculum uh, this week before vacation and making comments and collaborating with teachers in that way. The description field hasn't really been utilized so much. Um, this is the metadata belonging to the specific Google Docs. So for example, this H123, um, that's coming from this description field. And we haven't yet sorted out exactly how we're going to leverage uh, this specific field, um, but hopefully this year we'll, we'll come up with some more ideas. Um, in the course overviews, I'm using the description field to pull the grade level. Um, so I can filter by subject area, uh, grade level. Uh, we have an eight-day cycle uh, school year, so uh, there's 22 cycles in the year, and this is kind of how we plan out uh, when these units are happening. So these cycles are uh, sort of translated into real dates in the timelines feature, which we'll get to. Um, but I can filter these this display by cycle, and then of course also by just the the course that I want to look at. So if I wanted to look at all of the units in sixth grade vocal music, I can do that as well, and also get a sense of who else is collaborating on those units. So that's the uh, the unit planner awesome table. So uh, sticking with the theme of awesome tables, uh, this is a timelines feature. Uh, this recently sort of stopped working the way that I had intended it to work. Um, functionally, it still works. If I wanted to, to pick a couple of classes and I could list them out on a timeline and kind of see when the specific units are happening, um, but I've lost my ability to add the actual unit um, to the the bar. So I was going to re-engineer this anyway um, because I want to give faculty control over the timeline of this. Um, currently I was the only one who could update the dates to this so I have a I have a, a project in place that it will make that happen it's just not ready yet. So that's where we're going with with timelines and this will be linked to a master rollover sheet so essentially it'll roll over to the next year um, and then can continually be tweaked via a Google form um, moving forward. So those are the timelines. Uh, the Resource Center, um, this is a great place. These are just links to Google Drive folders that have resources for 
the specific academic areas, and then just general resources. And the idea behind this is that anything stored in these folders can also be linked to documents in the unit planners, right? So if, 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 in, if in my unit, which looks just like this, it's a template that our teachers fill out, if there are hyperlinks to specific documents, um, we can link to resources in that resource folder. So that's the idea behind that. Outcomes, um, these are still a work in progress. Um, we have a system in place to collect them. Um, we just need to uh, begin attributing them to our unit. So essentially, this is an awesome table. Um, and this green button is linked to a Google form to this uh, specific unit. So in other words, when I click on this link, it pre-fills a Google form with uh, the name of the unit as well as the corresponding document ID of that unit. Um, and if that sounds like gibberish, um, what that basically means is that I'm using uh, a static piece of data, which is this document ID, this never changes, to essentially link the outcomes uh, to that unit. And then these outcomes are dumped into their own spreadsheet which is then able to produce uh, reports. So if I go over, so we have outcomes for all of our major subject areas. If I go over to reports, um, I haven't built out too many of these, mainly because we haven't collected a lot of the reporting data yet. But um, I did produce just a couple to give you a sense of what they can look like. So um, these are the number of units by grade level. Uh, we got by subject area, so it looks at we can kind of see where the bulk of the unit planners lies right now. And it's in real time. So this is updated just on its own. Um, there is a full text search app, which I was able to use some code to, um, actually I used some existing code and kind of turned it into a web app. So and what this allows me to do is so when I launch it, let me just close that one, I can put in specific keywords like iPads. You know, there's not going to be a unit called iPads, but if I'm curious about um, who's using iPads in our particular unit, I can find that. Um, same goes for things like Twitter. So it's a great, it's a powerful way for teachers coming into the school to kind of uh, figure out um, who are sort of the early adopters with technology or who are using these tools with technology or if there's other uh, key terms they're interested in looking up they can search that way and then finally uh, the mechanism for delivering these unit planner templates is just a Google form that's connected to the add-on um, called Autocrat and once a teacher fills out this form and hits submit a Google Doc is automatically placed into the curriculum drive folder and delivered via email um, to the teacher. So there you have it. This is the latest walkthrough of the WIS uh, curriculum map. Thanks for watching.